Yes. Okay. I'll go to mute. All right. Thank yeah. you. Let's see. How do I want to record this? Oh, we could do gallery. Good morning, Kenya. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. And it's Ken it's Kenya. Is it Kenya or Kenya? Or how do you prefer? Um, Kenya. Kenya? Yeah. Kenya, I'm very, very excited to talk to you. This was a brilliant performance. I cried. I was very moved. Um, I have a child myself and I'm an active parent in the school system. So this was very meaningful to me. Uh, beginning, beginning with you and just your approach to this role, you're a very young actor. And even for adults, it's, a, it's challenging to do things that are maybe opposite of what they are. In this case, your, your character has to, is having difficulty reading and there's some miscommunication in the school system of what's happening and discriminatory practices. How did you prepare for a role like this? And can, if you would discuss the difficulty in trying to perform as a character so vastly different than who you are? Um, yeah, I'd say, I think the main um, part that I think I had to get across was just the dyslexia, I think, the main, like, not being able to read. So I did a research. Um, I have two cousins that are dyslexic. So I had a chat with them and they kind of gave me their point of view of what dyslexia is and how, like, nowadays in school, how you've, um, teachers can understand it and um, the privilege that they get from having it now. So, like, my cousin, he now gets extra time in the test just because it's hard for him to process the words fast enough. Um, so I kind of got that um, point of view nowadays um, and then I kind of read articles on just how it was dealt with in the time period Kingsley was in and just how bad it was compared to now. Um, and I think it was just more just committing to the character, I think, telling myself I can't read. I think that's what acting is, trying to believe that you can't. So that was quite hard, I think, just um, in general. But I think just being able to convert from the beginning of the film, not being able to read, then slowly seeing Kingsley's journey having hope that he can so just showing that through my facial expressions and I think just really trying to perform that correctly so I hope I got that across well mm -hmm. as you as you received this role how aware were you of the discrimin discriminatory practices uh, against Caribbean born British people in England and how much of that did you know about um, I don't think I knew a lot of it. I think it was more, I just had the idea of, oh, it was just racist. I don't think I knew in detail how racist it was until I really read the script, um, went on set, and I just saw how, like, just the characters were dressed and just the way they said the lines. And I just kind of just saw, it was as if I saw a flashback of what actually happened. And that's only when I realised this was tough. I think just the way the teachers were just, it looked like this wasn't just one day of Kingsley's life. This was like a couple of years in the school. So I was like the stuff he must have gone through or just children that were just in that time period, I think. Um, and just the fact that there was no love for children, just the way it was thrown back and forth from different schools. There was no like, let's take time, let's get to understand, let's help you. There was none of that. I think that's what was really hard. Um, and then just reading the script as well, just seeing how there was no, it, it wasn't like it got better. It was that he had to go to a Saturday school. There was no build up um, until teachers started to like take care of their children. It was more like, all right, just go to a Saturday school. Mm -hmm. And I think it was that they were willing to just let a child go. There was no like, let's try and keep him. There was no love for the child, I think. For your family who are quite a bit older than you, who have lived through some of these experiences and been able to witness this firsthand, what was their reaction when they had the opportunity to see the film or have they seen the film yet? Um, yeah, my parents have watched the film. Um, and luckily enough, we're actually West Indian, my work from Grenada. Um, so they kind of, my um, nan kind of, asked, when she watched it, it was like bringing back memories, I think, of just kind of when she was a child or just when my dad was a kid. Um, maybe not um, as much because of the era that we kind of lived in, but I think just to see it back again, I think you kind of forget exactly what happened. You kind of remember, but it's clear seeing it. And I think I remember watching it, then my dad having a conversation with me and just kind of further more detailed of what happened and how it was just really tough in those times. And I think especially for like um, my nan, just to live through that with her own son as well, just seeing that um, build up to nowadays, just it's always telling us appreciate what you have now because of how bad it was then. So it's always good, I think for me and my brother and sister just to watch it and then just see like the journey that people in those days had up to now, I think, yeah. 
with uh, with these collection of films, with these small acts films, these are some very important, poignant films that are educating mm-hmm. a lot of people, including myself as an American, who only really sees racism through my American lens and not realizing uh, how racism has affected other Black people in other areas of the world. How educational has this been for you personally to not only participate in a project like this, but to see some of the other films and learn more about how Caribbean people in England and other places have been treated? I think this has definitely been very educational. I think, especially like kind of what you're saying, seeing a lot of American racial history, I think um, a lot of the time on Netflix, me and my mum will watch a documentary about it. I think my mum also said to herself, like, there's so much British history that's been hidden that we kind of see in the news, but they don't go into detail with this. But I think Steve has proper, like, explained exactly what happened. I think each film shows different events in that same time period. So I think especially, like, with Red, White and Blue, just seeing how lots of police officers had in mind um, just trying to get as high as they can in that position to then change um, that lifestyle. Um, and just thinking the other ones as well, just it's kind of just it's retelling you what happened in those days up to where I am now. So I think a lot of the time it's always educating like you guys, the adults who were kind of kids in those days, but also just to my generation now, um, just to see in general and how it's changed. Um, I think also with like Love is Rock, um, the dance and how dances just changes. I think it's just showing different categories, not just like violence or racism, just mm. fun. And I think it just, it shows everything that happened in those days, which is really good. Yeah, a lot of times when we think of racism as black people, we only see the images of protests in the street and don't realize like the subtleties of within the school system and how it affects that and and law enforcement on the other side of law enforcement as people working within that structure and some of the uh, difficulties they they face. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Kenya, how has this transformed you as an actor? I imagine it stretched you in different ways other than some previous things that you've done. How have you grown and changed Uh, after doing this? I think definitely this was very challenging. One of the hardest roles I've ever got. Um, I think this especially with just such a high cost, I think just the mum as well, having her such, such just performing so um, powerfully, it forced me to reach her level. It would have been weird if she's up here and I'm down here. So I think in just in general, it's kind of given me that confidence of knowing I can be as good as I can be. Um, I think just with other acting roles, I can say to myself, because this wasn't, Kingsley is completely different to Kenya. So it's also just showing the contrast between us. And I think it did challenge me quite a lot um, in general just reading through the lines and just properly understanding Kingsley. Um, And also it kind of, not only was I just reading the scripts, but it kind of just, this, the thought process of getting to where Kingsley is, just um, reading through the lines, understanding him. I think it's just a good thought process. And I kind of wrote it down in my notebook, um, just showing me like how I can get to a character. So it's kind of like preparation for other hard roles I might get in the future, which I think is really good because I want to always be prepared for like anything that happens. So I think this has been, um, it's been really good working on this project. Well, you you were excellent. I was just immensely moved in just the subtleties and the things that you did to really make Kingsley a whole person. And that made it wholly enjoyable. Thank you so much for your time, Kenya. You're immensely talented. It is Mm -hmm. such a pleasure speaking to you. And I look forward to seeing the next roles you have in the future. Thank you.